So, November is here. Um, it's the fourth day now, and I'm pretty sure it's grain today. Um, it's either grain or pastry today. But uh, if you don't know what November is, it basically goes from November 1st to November 30th, and you have a topic every day to make a procedural material out of. Now, procedural materials are very complicated and very complex, and I'm going to be honest, I don't understand them one bit. But what I do understand is what I'm going to be teaching you today in this video, and that is how to make a procedural lava shader. So if anything, this will get you at least started in procedural texturing, at least knowing the basics of how to uh, mix like, uh, like shader nodes together. Um, procedural textures, they get in a lot of like math and vector displacements and stuff. But we're going to be doing a very simple lava shader today. This is probably one of the most simple procedural textures you can do that actually, like, takes effort. Well, not effort. Anyway, let's get right into it. So we have a cube right here. And we are going to delete this cube. And we're going to hit Shift A and add a UV sphere. We're going to scale up the sphere to about, like, there. Hit Control A and apply the scale. So we're going to hit Control 2 now to give it two subdivisions and then right click and click Shade Smooth. We're going to go to our Modifiers tab, go to this little arrow right up here, and then click Apply. That will apply the modifier so nothing messes up in it. So what we're going to do is switch over here to Cycles. And I'm going to switch to GPU Compute. You could use EV um, Cycles and EV both work with this as far as I know. But I'm going to use Cycles because I like Cycles better than EV. Um, and we're just going to go up here to the very top left, right under the Blender logo, where our crosshair will turn into, well, our mouse cursor will turn into this little crosshair. Just click and then drag. So this will split our window. And now what we can do is go up here to this little ball and grid right under the Blender logo again. Click it and then click Shader Editor. So now uh, we can click N to close this little toolbar if you have it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click New. And this will give us a um, new material. And what we can do is we can go ahead and go in. Uh, we can go ahead and change our world settings to black, and we can go ahead and go into rendered mode. So you can see right here, uh, right now it's just uh, our ball. Uh, we can change this to gray too, just to see it a little better. And what we're gonna do to our first step to make this lava shader is Shift A and then add a mix shader. So just Shift A and then type in mix. It'll be mix shader and just put this. Uh, where this little node line is connecting the principal to material output. What the mix shader does is it basically takes two BSDFs or two shaders and mixes them together into an output. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an emission shader. So shift A and then type in emission and this will give us an emission shader. Go ahead and connect this little green dot to the bottom shader of the mix shader and you see now our texture is emitting light. So if we turn the, uh, we turn the light off and we put a plane under it we can see that it is now emitting light. So I'm going to delete this plane, uh, click our emission shader again. I want to change the strength to maybe something like 30, um, maybe 45, and then change the color to a nice dark orange, something like that. And once we have that, what we can go ahead and do is change our base color on our, on our principal shader to a pretty much dark gray or black not completely black but just a dark gray and then change the roughness to a very high roughness maybe something like 0 0.7 0 0.75 maybe 0 0.75 will work we can always adjust that later if it doesn't look right and now basically what we're gonna do is right now even though we have two shaders here mixing together the shader is completely overpowered by the emission shader so what we need to do is we need to tell blender what areas to actually mix them together in and the way we do that is with a color ramp node so what a color ramp node is is you have a white and black value by default you can change those to whatever you want but it's normally a white and black value that you can bring closer or farther together and the whites and blacks basically tell blender where the emission or where the principles should be so just shift a in our little shader window right here and type in color ramp and we have our color ramp right here and so what we can do is we can use our color ramp and take this little color output and then put it into the factor of the mix shader. And so basically what that's telling it is use whatever the color ramp is t is giving out and then use that to um, tell what Blender should do with these two shaders right here. And so now what we're gonna do is even though we have this color ramp right here, you can see that we can do this and it'll bring up or bring down the emission value but you'll notice it's not it's still not mixing it 
So the reason it's not mixing it is we have to tell, we have to give Blender a white and black texture. And so you could use a pre-made texture, but this is procedural. So we're going to use one of Blender's procedural textures, which is going to be, in this case, a noise texture. You have all kinds of different textures. You have like brick textures, Voronoi textures, Musgrave textures, so on and so forth. But we're going to use a noise texture. We're going to click Shift A and then type in noise and then just get a noise texture and then put the color into the fac of the color ramp. And so now once we have that, we can bring this up and down and you can see that it's now telling Blender where the emission should be. So you can see we have this now and we can turn up the scale and then we can turn up the detail and we can change the roughness also to do this. Um, and then we can change the distortion up a little bit. So maybe something like that. And also what we're going to do now is we're going to activate this light again. So what we can do now is we can add bump to this. Uh, I did change the color a little bit and then up the strength to 50. But what we can do is we can change um, we can change the bump. So we can give this bump. Uh, what bump is is basically simulated detail um, that's going to be on these black parts right here to give it more of a rocky texture. So all we have to do is shift A and then type in bump and then connect the normal from the bump map into the normal of the principal shader and then put the color from the noise texture into the height of the bump. So you can see now we have this little rocky texture but we need more detail on this. So the way we do that is we can decrease or increase the roughness of this um, noise texture and we might be able to increase the distortion too. And so now we have this and if we want we could change, not that, um, and if we want, we could change the color to maybe more of a red, orange, like a deeper orange kind of thing right here. And so now we have this kind of lava rock texture right here. Um, if you wanted to, you could bring this down, or not down, but you can bring this down or up more, depending on how much lava you want. Um, I'd say that looks pretty good. And if we really want to, we could duplicate this noise texture and then put the color into the vector and then that gives us even more <coughs> noise and then we could just like change this however we want change the scale on this and change the distortion a little bit so we have something like this but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna keep it like this with one noise texture and so one thing about this is even though it's procedural if you put this on a model the geometry and the topology of the model will change this texture and so we don't really want that we want to know that this texture will be applied the same on every model that we use so the way we do that is we shift a and then we're gonna add a texture coordinate node bring this over here and then we're gonna add shift a and then add a mapping node and so what we're gonna do is we're going to put the generated into the vector on all these or actually we could just put that into the vector we don't have to worry about these locations because you might want to change this so just put generator into vector and then vector into a vector of the noise texture and so now we can see that basically if we add another mesh uh, let's say we add say a cone and then we give it the same material we'll be able to see that the texture is the same on both of these um, so that's basically telling blender to keep the material the same and we can go ahead and add a plane down here if we wanted to and then give this a just a dark material where's my shader at there it is just give this like a dark gray material with like a low roughness to kind of reflect it kind of just set up the scene a little bit and just do this and so yeah that's pretty much your lava shader completed um if you guys like the video, uh, make sure to subscribe. It really helps me get my videos out to other people. But yeah, this is pretty much one of the most simple shaders you can make. You can always mess with it to make the lava look a little bit different. Um, you can add different stuff to it. You can add different textures if you want like a wacky kind of like different kind of lava. But yeah, you can also change the color of the emission if you want like different color lava. Um, so yeah, um, but that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, if you guys liked it, then make sure to leave a like, and my name is Michael from Polygon Island, 
and I'll see you guys next time.